You sure you won't have another steak? Ah, uh, uh, no, thank you, Ben. Uh, thank you kindly. Uh, three's about my limit for lunch. You know, Jake, you don't eat as hearty as you used to. That's the truth, Ben. That's the truth. Maybe it's the heat. I don't recall a hot spell as bad as this in the last 40 years. Yeah, it sure is a rough one. <laughs> now, uh, Jake, about the uh, renewal of our agreement on the water rights. I had Ira Minton drop the contract as usual. Uh, lawyers come pretty high these days, Ben. Uh, you paying the bill? <clears throat> yeah, as, as usual. Now, for your protection now, Jake, I want you to go over that contract with Ira. I intend to do just that, Ben, as long as you're paying the bill. As uh, usual. Howdy, Jake. Howdy, boys. <laughs> yes, sir. Sure is a pleasure seeing you, Ben. <laughs> Even though it is only once a year. Well, it's a pleasure seeing you, too, Jake. You know, we're very grateful for the water rights that we get from you. Yeah. Ponderosa sure needs plenty of water. <laughs> hey, Jake, aren't you kind of hot in that black suit? Nope. Black keeps the sun out. <laughs> you boys ought to know that. Didn't they teach you anything in school? Now, Ben, as long as I'm here, why don't you advise me on something? Well, I will if I can. Well, the thing is, I've decided to make out my will. What's the matter, Jake? Are you feeling too well? I'm feeling fine. What's all the concern about a will? Don't you think a 92-year-old man ought to have his affairs in order? If you're feeling fine. Uh, I was till I got here. But dang if it don't look like I'm about to be talked to death. Just trying to help, Jake. Just trying to help. <laughs> now, Ben, would you be kind enough to tell me how to go about making out a will? Oh, Jake, I, I think you ought to see a lawyer about that. Mm -hmm. oh, look, you, you're going to stop over and see Ira Minton about the water agreement. Why don't you ask him? Hey. Maybe you got an idea there, Ben. As long as I'm seeing Ira about these here papers, why don't you just add the will making to the bill? All right, Jake. <laughs> That's the way you want it. <laughs> it's a right smart thought you had there, Ben. I'm much obliged. Oh, here, let me help you. Uh, let me alone. I I'm all right. Jake! Jake! Let's get him in the house, Paul. Yeah. Oh, come on. No, no, no time for that horse. There's no time for nothing now. Not even making out my, my will. Are oh, you gonna be all right, Jake? The, the heat got to you a little bit, that's all. No, no. Feels like my head split wide open. Man. I'm right here, Jake. I want everything I got to go to my next of kin. All right. Will you, will you see to it? I, I, I give you my word, Jake. You'll be all right. Oh, thanks. I'm much obliged to you. Jake, who's your next of kin? Jake, who is your next of kin? Meredith Smith. Did you say Meredith Smith? That's right. Ben, see to it. Meredith Smith gets everything I got. I was never more serious in my life. According to these, I judge that Jake Smith's holdings amount to well over $160,000. $160,000? Hmm. 
Well, this is his title to acreage in Texas. These are shares in a thriving copper mine in Montana. And this is part interest, a generous part interest, in a freight line running out of Oklahoma into New Mexico. Yes, I'd say that Jake did all right by himself in his short 92 years. <laughs> when I think of the steaks I fed that man over the past 15 years. <laughs> you know, maybe that's why he was able to accumulate as much as he did. True, true. <laughs> uh, what do I do with those papers, I? <laughs> well, since you're the executor of the estate. No, wait a minute. Who says I'm the executor of his estate? Well, he appointed you with his dying breath. Both your sons were witnesses. That makes you the executor, whether you like it or not. Well, I don't like it. Well, nevertheless, that's the law. Now, your first job is to find old Jake's heir, or heirs. He did name one, didn't he? Yeah, Meredith Smith, whoever that may be. Well, then go find Meredith Smith. Well, wait a minute. How do I go about doing that? Well, the simplest way is to uh, advertise. Put notices in all the legal columns of every newspaper. Oh. You've got six months. Six. Why, why six months? It's the law. It's designed to protect the estate against any false claims made by possible debtors. Oh, I see. Uh, I'll bill you for all this, of course. Of course. Six months, nothing. Nobody's even made a claim against the estate. Well, I wonder why that Meredith Smith hasn't answered the notice you put in the paper. Oh, I've been wondering that for six months. Well, at least we got till tomorrow. Sure. And after that, everything reverts back to the territory of Nevada, including the water rights. Yeah, we gotta have water. Hey, what about that creek over on the Harris place? I talked to Mr. Harris about that. Water there's so low, he hasn't any to spare for us. Guess we'll just have to hope Meredith Smith shows up. It's a pretty hopeless thought, isn't it? That's him, coming down the street there with his son. Which place? Mr. Ben Cartwright. That's right. I'm Meredith Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it sure is good to meet you, Mr. Smith. Uh, this is my son, Joseph. Joseph, this is Meredith Smith. We've been waiting to meet you. Meet you. You've come to claim Jake's estate. Yes, sir, I did. Poor Uncle Jake. Jake was your uncle? Yes, sir, he was. And as fine a man as ever lived. Did he leave much? Oh, he left a tidy sum. As a matter of fact, uh, I guess you'll be able to get along all right if you don't chew too much tobacco. <laughs> Uh, uh, how's that, sir? Oh, uh, I was just trying to make a joke. Uh, oh, no, he left a goodly amount. Uh, uh, of course, as you know by my advertisement in the paper, you can't claim it until after tomorrow. Well, yes, sir, I, I read that piece in the paper, but uh, how come I can't get it till tomorrow? Oh, well, it's just a technicality, you see. Just a technicality. See, we have to wait a full six months just to make sure there aren't any creditors' claims. I see. Tomorrow's the last day. Uh, Mr. Smith? Why don't you go over to that hotel there? It's a very fine place. You just rent yourself a room and charge it to my account. Well, that's very nice of you, Mr. Cartwright. I'll be there when you need me. Well, it's sure good to see you, Mr. Smith. Sure good to see you. Looking forward to it. It was awful nice of you taking care of the room like that. Well, son, a little politicking doesn't hurt. He owns the water rights. Mr. Ben Cartwright. Uh, Mr. Ben Cartwright. Ma'am? I'm glad to meet you. I'm Meredith Smith. Did you say Meredith Smith? Well, I'd say it's an improvement. Uh, Ma'am, this, uh, this is my son, Joseph, Miss, Miss Smith. How do you do? It's my pleasure, man. Uh, well, let me let me take your suitcase, Miss Smith, and uh, Joseph, I'll, I'll take Miss Smith over to the hotel and get her settled, and I'll I'll meet you later at the saloon, folks. Sure, you don't want me to help you, Bob? No, I'm fine. Uh, 
Indian lady would like a room in your hotel. Certainly, Mr. Cartwright. Meredith Smith, put that big cowboy. Uh, uh, Mr. Potts, uh, just make sure that this young lady has one of your best rooms. She's my guest. Anything you say, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. It's a pleasure, Miss Smith. What do you think, Bob? Well, obviously, one of them is a fraud. The question is, which one? Yeah. You know, I hope it's not the girl. She's pretty good looking. Right. Nothing, I just got a hunch. You don't suppose... Uh... No. Don't say it. I think you may be right. Ben Cartwright? Mr. Meredith Smith. Well, how did you know that? Well, we've uh, been expecting you. Oh. But I'm afraid the Smith estate won't be settled until sometime tomorrow. Well, I'm in no hurry, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, you'll find that the uh, hotel at the corner is a very nice place to stay. You just tell the clerk that you're my guest. Well, thank you very much. Until tomorrow, then? Until tomorrow. Guess me your whole life who this is. <laughs> Meredith Smith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How'd you know that? Oh, well, I was very quick to catch on. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Smith. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Cartwright. I, uh, I presume you've come about the estate. Oh, yes. Well, it'll take a day or two before everything can be straightened out. Oh, I understand. Uh, legal matters have a way of getting complicated. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't realize how much until now. Uh, well, uh, I guess you two boys have plenty to keep you busy. I'll take Mr. Smith over to the hotel and get him straightened out. Come along, Mr. Smith. Hey, Joe, what's going on around here, anyhow? Well, I'll see if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Here, Mr. Cartwright, just what do you think you're doing? Well, for one thing, I'm creating a small boom in the hotel business all by myself. Now, Mr. Smith is going to register as my guest in this hotel, so just give him a pen. That's fine. Oh, there you are. Uh, I'd like you to meet my pa, Ben Cartwright, Mrs. Smith. Huh? Yeah, Mrs. Smith just came in on the California stage. Mrs. Meredith Smith. Yes. It was so thoughtful of you to send your son to meet me. Yes, he's a great help. Where's your, uh, where's your brother horse? Oh, he went back to the Ponderosa. He I... told me to remind you we still have a ranch to run. Yes, I hope so. Yes. Uh, well, Mrs. Smith, uh, would you like to register? Potts, this lady is going to register here as my guest in this hotel. Cosmo. Yeah, I make it too. This thing is really turned into a problem, isn't it? Yeah. I think we deserve a beer. You know, I was just thinking, though. All right, suppose Jake's land goes to the Territory of Nevada. 
Well, why can't we get the water rights from them? Oh, I wish it were that easy. If the land goes back to the territory of Nevada, it goes up for auction. Everybody knows we want the water rights, so the price goes sky high. We've got to find the rightful heir before the time is up. <sighs> Drink hearty. Hmm. What's Brother Oss doing back in town? Oss, what are you doing back here? Oh, Paul on the way to the Ponderosa a while ago, I ran into a fella looking for you. Oh, well, what do you want? Well, he says his name's Meredith Smith. Uh, another one? Yep. Well, where's he? Well, he's sort of bashful. He's standing over here at the door. Keep your fingers crossed. <sighs> Mr. Smith, this is my Paul, Ben Cartwright. Meredith Smith, most honorable sir. And I'm telling you, the whole idea is preposterous. Not at all. I'm Mr. Cartwright's guest, ain't I? <laughs> Excuse me, uh... Mr. Potts, uh, what seems to be the trouble? This gentleman here wishes me to pay for his barbershop services and put it on your bill. Oh, uh, well, after all, the gentleman is my guest. <laughs> Much obliged. Oh, uh, uh, don't forget to tip. I'm a big tipper. Big tipper. Big show-off, if you ask me. Here you go. Now, just how much of this do you intend to stand for? Oh, well, Mr. Potts. I... Oops. Oh, good morning, Mr. Cartwright. Uh -huh. I've had so much fun just buying a few things. Why, well, Virginia City has quite a nice collection of shops for a town this size. Yeah, yes, it, it has a... Oh, I, I charged into my hotel bill. You don't mind, do you? Oh, no, no, of course not. An heiress can't be expected to wear just anything. Oh, well, you're, you're absolutely right. It's very pretty. Oh, of course, I'll reimburse you when the estate is settled. Oh, of course. You are a dear, an absolute dear. Thank you. Add these to the others, Mr. Potts. Anything you say, Mr. Cartwright. But I must say... Don't. Good morning, Mr. Cartwright. Lovely day, isn't it? Yes, it, uh, it's a lovely day. I've been out buying a few things. And since I'm a little short of cash, just until the estate is settled, of course, Sorry. I thought that... Uh, you uh, might want to charge these to your hotel bill. Yes, how did you know? Oh, I just sort of guessed. It isn't very much, really. A few bottles of Dr. Wisdom's Wonder Tonic, five pounds of cloves, and a few fresh coffee beans. You see, I'm bothered with a little stomach trouble. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mrs. Smith. I really am. Well, ta-ta. I have a lot to take care of. Just thinking about all that money is giving me a case of indigestion. Five pounds of cloves. Better prepare yourself, Mr. Cartwright. Ah, present from Mr. Cartwright. Thank you, Honorable Sir. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh... Well, what did I buy? Eight pounds lychee nuts, six stuffed water lilies, ginger powdered coconut, seven jellyfish, and a dried squid. No shark pin? <laughs> Callie! Don't call me Callie. Well, all right. If I don't call you Callie, what do I call you? I don't want you to call me anything. I don't want you to even speak to me. Now, look, what are you doing here? I'd say that wasn't any of your business. I ask you to stay in Abilene. 
I told you I'd be back for you as soon as I had enough money for us to get married. Now, why didn't you wait for me? I got tired of waiting. Honey, you know I love you. Well, you said that before, too. Now, why should I believe you now? now let me go. Not until you tell me what you're doing here. Callie! Callie! Oh, 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 my goodness. I, I, I thought this was uh, my room. Oh, that's all right, dearie. Well, you Come must, right on in. You must think. Oh, dear. Oh, I never could tell one hall door from another myself. Set a spell. Uh, thank you. Uh, I uh, don't believe I better. You going somewhere? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, I just came in. I, I, I've got a, a dreadful headache, and uh, I went out to get something for it. Oh, then you should have come here in the first place. Well, I got just the thing for you. Just the thing for me? Here you are. Take a good long swallow. Uh, Dr. Uh, Wisdom's Wonder Tonic. You'll wonder how you ever got along without it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm a bit cautious about taking strange medicine. Oh, so am I. But you don't need to worry about this one. As a matter of fact, I feel a little headache coming on myself. I'll take one with you. <laughs> that wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> it's, uh, it? It's warming, isn't it? <laughs> you notice that? Mm -hmm. It's the sure sign of a quick cure. Mm -hmm. Reckon I ought to have another one just to keep you company. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mrs. Smith. You're a kind, thoughtful woman. Oh, it's sweet of you to say so. <laughs> it is warming. <laughs> it's uh, very nice of you to share it with me. It's the least I can do for a friend. You consider me a friend. Certainly. <laughs> well, I don't usually make friends easily. An interesting man like you. I never would have known it. In fact, at times, I get quite lonely. Being a widow's lonely, too. Are you feeling better? Considerably. Oh. <laughs> Do you suppose that I need another? You <laughs> oughtn't to take a chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, Lady, he's first. Oh. <laughs> 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 that was a good one. <laughs> Do you want another one? Oh. Come on. Come on. Wait, Kelly. Now what? I just found out what you're doing here. I'm doing the same thing you're doing. No, with me it's different. Sure it is. You want to get rid of everybody else so you can have it all for yourself. Callie, you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. You're trying to scare me off so your chances will be better. That's what it boils down to, isn't it? Callie, you know I'm in love with you. And I just can't stand the thought of you ending up behind prison bars. Now, what do I have to say to convince you that you're making a terrible mistake? There's nothing you can say. Now, I'm not going back to that saloon. And when I get that money, I'm going to Europe and study music like I always planned. Now, if you want better odds, Mr. Gambler, you go talk somebody else in quitting. And when old Jake died, I uh, promised to see to it that his heir would uh, get all the property that old Jake left. Now, up until yesterday, I didn't have any luck at all locating an heir. Now, today, I, I got more luck than I need. Explain, please. <clears throat> uh, 
we are all uh, Meredith Smiths. Ah, so. Nice big family. Now, how do you account for the fact that all of you are named Meredith Smith? Well, that's, a, that's an old family name, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, I see. <laughs> you know, I had, a, I had a meeting with Sheriff Coffey this morning, and we were going through some posters, and just by chance, you might say, we came across this poster. Uh, how do you account for the fact that uh, the name under this picture of you is uh, John Swanson, also known as Snake Oil Swanson, one of the slickest con men of the West. Well, you'll, uh, you, you'll notice, Mr. Cartwright, that uh, that poster it doesn't say wanted. It, uh, it says warning. Well, that's true. But a charge of attempted fraud can change the wording. <laughs> well, let's, let's not be hasty about this. Let's uh, just say that I made an error in judgment and... Uh, why don't we forget the whole thing? Well, all right, I don't mind that. On one condition, that you leave Virginia City immediately. Of course. <sighs> Pity we might have made a lovely family. Ladies and gentlemen, I think, uh, I think I'll tell you that uh, attempted fraud, a fraud of any kind, is a crime punishable by law. Now, is there anybody else that might like to confess to uh, an error in judgment? Very well, then I guess the next thing we ought to do is uh, find out what kin you all were to Jake, uh, and what you have to prove it. And we'll start with, uh, we'll start with you. <clears throat> well, uh, uh, here is, uh, uh, my family Bible, uh, with, uh, uh my name, uh, oh, uh, and, uh, date of birth. Yeah, and uh, where were you born? Connecticut. Connecticut. And, uh, what relationship did you have with Jake? Ah, uh, oh, uh, uh, would would you repeat the question? Well, what 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 kin were you of Jake's? Uh, I don't know. You don't know. We never lived in near any of our relatives. Oh, I, I, I see. Thank you. Thank you. I... <clears throat> I beg your pardon. Miss Smith? He was my grandpa. But I never expected to have my word doubted. Well, just trying to get things straight, Miss Smith. Mr. Smith? I was his grandson. But I'm afraid you'll just have to take my word for it. Mm. Mrs. Smith? Here's my marriage certificate, Mr. Cartwright. He was a fine man. Yes. Well, I guess that uh, leaves you. I son. His son? Adopted son. Oh. Papers say so. Oh. Well, it's in Chinese. Why not? I Chinese. Oh. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll take everything that you've uh, told me into consideration, and I'll be in touch with all of you just as soon as I possibly can be. Thank you. I think that we should talk this over. There's nothing to talk about. I stand pat. I have nothing to lose. Uh, neither have I. 
Same like rest family. Good morning, Chen Lu. Morning, Mr. Cartwright. Morning. Now, shirt day. Tuesday, shirt day. Oh, oh, I didn't forget. That's not why I came in. Uh, you can read Chinese, can't you? Yes, but not all ancient scholars. Well, I don't think this was written by an ancient scholar. It's a legal document. But I do! Well, you didn't do anything. I just want you to read it. Oh, better. <laughs> More better. Not have glasses. Yeah, need glasses. You see them? No, but, well, I'll help you look for them. Don't seem to be around. Crazy woman all the time, clean and high glasses. Where's my glasses? I find. You know I have to yell. Crazy woman yell all the time. Ooh. That's a pretty legal document, isn't it? Pretty legal. Official. Uh, oh, official. Well, what does it say? Ryzen to hunt snakes. Aya. Morning, Cal. Oh, hi, Ben. What can I do for you? Well, I was hoping you'd be able to tell me something about this paper. I'll do the best I can. Uh, just a minute while I get my magnifying glass. Huh. That fool thing go ahead it just a minute ago. Cal? Try your pocket. Pocket? Yeah. <laughs> now, how did you know? Figured. <laughs> Where's the paper? Uh, Meredith Crane and Jacob Smith. Now, does this belong to that woman that's been claiming she's old Jake's widow? Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping you might be able to clear the matter up for me. Well, maybe we can. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh -uh. uh -uh. uh -uh. uh -uh. What, 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 what is it? Uh, watermarks. Watermarks. Now, hold it up to light. Yeah, there up in the left-hand corner. Yeah? What about it? Well, it means that 20 years ago, when this certificate was dated, that paper manufacturing company wasn't even in business. Is that a fact? Yeah. Is that a fact? Come here. Hey, what about this Bible? Huh? Oh, that's hard to say. Seems real enough. Look at that through the glass. Huh? Any way you can be sure? No, I reckon I can compare the paper in this Bible with an old one I have at home. Oh, I'd appreciate that. Would you do that, Cal? Of course, Ben. Anything I can do to help. Thank you, Cal. I think I know of a grieving widow who may need some help. Hmm? <laughs> uh, Mrs. Smith? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Smith? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Smith was a very lucky man. Who? Uh, your husband. I haven't got a husband. Uh, when he was alive, I mean. Who? Uh, uh, your husband. I just told you, I never had a husband. Aren't you a widow? Certainly I'm a widow. But I'm afraid I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing complicated about it. Widowing's my business. Your business? Yes, you dear, sweet little man. Have another clove. You see, when I hear somebody's looking for an heir, I show up as the widow. You do? Why? Don't you see, if nobody else shows up, then I inherit the boodle. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, isn't that wrong? Of course not, you dear, sweet little man. Look at the trouble I save everybody. They can all stop looking and have peace of mind. 
And of course, I always see that the money is put to good use. Why just oodles of people sleep better nights because of me? That is the most noble humanitarian thing I ever heard in my whole life. You are absolutely <clears throat> the most thoughtful, wonderful person I've ever met in my whole life. Oh, you sweet, adorable little man. <laughs> I can't understand how no woman ever claimed you for her husband. <laughs> May I have another clove? <laughs> Mr. Smith. <laughs> Miss Smith. <laughs> get you, get you, go. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> oh. well. now, sit down right here, young man. Now, what is your name? Meredith. No, 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 no. What is your real name, your Chinese name? Ah, uh, Ah uh, Chow. Ah, uh, what? Ah, uh, Chow, like. Uh, no, never mind. Now, look. Ah, uh, Chow, I had a friend of mine read this paper which you gave me. I don't think you should expect to inherit anything from the Jake Smith estate. Ah, uh, so. Aren't you disappointed? Is that all you have to say? Confucius say, win some, lose some. <laughs> you have wife honorable, sir. No, but <laughs> what has that got to do with what we're talking about? Ah, uh, Chow, number one houseboy. Oh, well, Acha, I don't need a houseboy. Cook, clean, sew buttons. Like I said, I don't need one. How you know till you try. Have references. Well... Uh, oh. Acha, they're in Chinese. Why not? I Chinese. Number one, references. Good afternoon, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, Potts, I'd like you to do me a favor. Certainly. Is Miss Meredith Smith in? As far as I know, I didn't see her go out. Uh, would you uh, tell her to come down to the lobby? I'd like to talk to her. I don't have to tell her. Here she comes now. Now, remember, all you have to do is just look at her and see if you recognize her. All right, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, Miss Smith! Oh, hello, Mr. Cartwright. Hi. How are you today? Oh, just fine. Uh, Miss Smith, I'd like you to meet Mr. Ozzy Flint from Abilene. Well, that's where you're from, isn't it? Oh, sure, I know her, Mr. Cartwright. That's Callie Martin. Used to sing at the Red Dog Saloon. Howdy, honey. <laughs> Callie, this was bound to happen. You let me go. Not yet. Are you sure you're not making any mistake? Oh, no, not in a million years, Mr. Cartwright. That's her, all right. Uh, and I, I know that fella she's with. A uh, gambler named Ace and the Whole Jones. You dirty skunk, will you let me go? Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, if, if, if you don't need me no more, I, I, I'd just as leaf go while I'm still able. You go ahead. Thank you, Ozzy. Thank you for your help. Uh, from now on, I don't know nobody. Well, what are you going to do now? Try and swindle somebody else? Callie, I'm no swindler. You know better than that. Now, what do I have to do to convince you? Uh, Chow, what are you doing? I'm number one bellboy, too. Bellboy? Yes, business has been so good lately, I had to put on help. I have job now. Make plenty money. I can now stay America. No need go back Hong Kong. Mr. Cartwright? 
Yes, Mrs. Smith? I'm leaving immediately. Does that mean that you're relinquishing your claim to the Jake Smith estate? It does. Mr. Smith here and I have just been united in the holy bonds of matrimony. And I have no intention of working on my honeymoon. Working on... Well, congratulations to both of you. Uh, uh, Mr. Smith, are you leaving too? Uh, with my beautiful bride. Well, I, you know, this, this Bible, it's authentic. Of course. May I have my Bible, please? Well, yes, of course. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I knew all along I was not related to Jake Smith. <laughs> Now I can retire and let you go on snatching the boodle. What? Let's get out of here while the getting's good. Yes, you marvelous, wonderful man. <laughs> well, I hope they'll be very happy with each other. Well, that leaves me with two discredited heirs. No, only one. You see, old Jake Smith really was my grandfather. Ah. Uh. You know that ranch he would never leave? Well, it was located on the south bank of Willow Creek. Yeah, well, anybody could have found that out. You're a hard man to convince, Mr. Cartwright. Well, let me see. Oh, I remember something about a copper mine that he owned in Idaho. Uh. No, Montana. And when I was a little guy, I took a ride from Oklahoma City to New Mexico on a freight line that he was part owner in. And the last time I saw him, he was just getting ready to buy some land to run cattle on down in Texas. Huh? Oh, one more thing. He could put away more steak than any man I ever met. That does it. By golly, you are the fella. Meredith Smith, I, I've been looking for you for six months. I'm going to turn that estate over to you right now. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Then you really are. Yes, I really am. Callie, you wouldn't want me to live on that big ranch all alone, would you? My name's Betsy. Betsy Hackenbush. <laughs> Mine's Jake, honey. Jake Smith, just like my grandfather's. My middle name was Meredith. I don't think I'll have any trouble remembering that name. One more thing. You know, I just can't see you moving off to Europe to study music. Well, then, I'll just have to settle for a piano in the parlor. <sighs> Well, I'm sure glad that you enjoyed it. Well, why don't we mix a little business with pleasure? I have the water agreement here already signed. You'd like to read it? Oh, yes. Well, I'm sure that's in order, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, not so fast, dear. We did say I was going to handle the money. I meant the household money. I had all the money. Well, it's very obvious, Mr. Cartwright, that uh, my husband's grandfather was very lenient with you. What do you mean? Now, honey, please. Let's... Shh, darling. You know very well that you need that water desperately. Oh, is that... Uh, is that what you think, Mrs. Smith? Oh, no, it's not what I think. It's what I know. Now, I figure a 25% increase per month to be added to the total until the 12-month period is ended. Um, Mrs. Smith, uh, I think perhaps you ought to know that uh, <clears throat> Mr. Crawford was by here yesterday. Mr. Crawford's a neighbor of ours. He owns the ranch about 20 miles away from here. He has a big, gushing stream of water running along his land, and he offered to supply us with all the water we could possibly need here, so... Maybe we'd just better forget about this contract completely. Well, let's not be hasty now. A deal's a deal. Well, uh, uh, 
And there are your water rights, Mr. Cartwright. I'll say goodbye to the Cartwrights, honey, and uh, thank Mr. Cartwright for his generous hospitality. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Well, thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you for dropping by. Bye. Paul, Mr. Crawford offered you that water, sure enough. Well, it seems to me I went by Crawford's place uh, not too many days ago. I think it was last Wednesday, and that gushing, bubbling stream was dry as a bone. Oh, well, I'll tell you, son. Uh, see, when you play poker with a gambler or with his wife, sometimes uh, a bluff comes in mighty handy. Sigmund. Cavalry uses polished steel. I would use mirrors. Well, if it's a cavalry, it looks like they just ride down here and check on us, don't it? I think we better change plans. Cordus Corner is only about four or five hours ride from here. It's out of our way, but they got a telegraph wire. We can find out if anything's going on. from home. Three graves to dig, Paul. We got five graves to dig. Two more in there, shot and scalped. I'll be able to find some shovels in the hardware store, huh? some blankets in the hotel. The graveyard's right down the street. The sooner we get started. I'll take a look. We'll all take a look.
long enough to get here. You heard us right in? I heard you. Why the wait? Some guy who speak English pretty well. I didn't know who was out there. It took a while before one of you came into sight. How why all the noise then? Why don't you just shout out to us? Mister, you spend four days without water. You haven't got much voice for shouting. Four days? Why you busted this town just after first light four days ago. How come you're still here now? I was under the bunk. The blanket pulled down. There'll be some keys out there in that mess in the office. The telegraph said the war parties were headed this way. Most folks started folding up, getting ready to fight. Then the telegraph went dead. Cut wire, I guess. Everybody spooked. Most of them headed for the hills, hide there. Even the sheriff took off at the last minute. Tall man, gray hair, white shirt, black vest. Yeah. We found him in the stable, dead. Been cussing that man for four days. Well, I couldn't see what happened to the folks who stayed. But I could hear it. I'm beginning to think one of those braves is wearing those keys for a trophy or something. Yeah. Hey. Hey, there. Yeah, I found something, too. Take a look at this. Uh, that, that could be enough for you. Make yourself sick. Something else I heard. Four days and nights in this sweat box. I heard water splashing in that fountain. If you want to drive somebody crazy, that's the way to do it. What'd you say your name was? I didn't say. Nobody asked. Oh, my name's Ben Cartwright. This is uh, Candy. My son's Joan Hoss. Candy, watch your blinds for the water. Drum some horses through a vine trip in Utah. Cut, right? I've heard that name. You got a big spread up Virginia City Way. I'm glad to hear you got horses. I was wondering what I was going to ride when you let me out. Hey, well, in the meantime, what about the name? You're persistent cuss, ain't you? The name's Kelly, Mike Kelly. I got tossed in here for tearing up that saloon. Oh, you know, I must say, Mr. Kelly, you look wonderful for a man 72 years old. 72? Yeah, right here in the legend. Mike Kelly, age 72, weight 130 pounds, charge common drunk. Gained a little weight, Mike. Yeah, for a man that hadn't had any food or water for four days, I'd say that's a pretty good trick. Well, maybe this makes a little more sense. Josh Tanner, age 30-some, weight 180. Charge first degree murder. Yeah. Too bad you found that book. Kind of put you in the middle, doesn't it, Mr. Cartwright? You uh, can't stay here. Can't live here to starve to death or die of thirst. We could use another drover. You take me along, you turn me over to the law when you get home? If you get home? Suppose I say no. Choice. He's a real hard nose, ain't he? When he has to be. You related? No, I work for him when there's nothing better to do. 
He's fair and honest. He won't ask you to do anything he wouldn't do himself. Honest, huh? The honest ones that get me in trouble. Well, like you said, it's your choice. That's a big country out there. It's Paiute country now. A man on foot wouldn't have a prayer. Cartwright, you got yourself a hand. For starters, I'll take that shovel. No, no. no for starters, you'll get yourself something to eat. Four days without food, you're no good to us. Find yourself something to eat and then spill off Joe up there. I'll get some grub and eat up there. This headstone might interest you. Murder. In Coulter Corners, that's what they call it when a Coulter gets shot. Even if it's a fair fight, and he draws first. But a month's pay, the Paiutes didn't leave one gun, let alone two. They're holdout guns, in case of trouble in the saloon. Old Pete kept them on a shelf up under the bar. The Paiutes were so busy grabbing whiskey, they didn't think to look. So how come you remember they were there? The last time I saw this scatter gun, it was aimed at my head. Few glasses, compass, and calf. That colonel must have kept one of everything in the army, I reckon. Well, add uh, 20 buttons to that list. Yes, sir. Hey, make it out. All this stuff's ready to go, Joe. Good enough. Fair and honest, huh? Looks to me like they're cleaning house. We got a saddle, a bridle, and a blanket, and these saddlebags from the livery stable. Come on. Tanner got a shotgun, a 45, and a bottle of whiskey at us alone. Better hand that to the list. If that's an IOU, I got 12 shotgun shells and half a box of 45s. Well, as soon as we finish here, we'll ride out, huh? Fair and honest. And a waste. Everything in this town is owned by somebody out in that graveyard. Take care of you. You're safe now. Didn't know I'd be needing this so quick.
You know her, Tony? I saw her around town for the last month or so. I think she was passing through from somewhere back east. Mr. Cartwright, unless you don't mind leaving her behind, I guess we won't be riding out. And within two hours, everyone, the whole town was running for their lives. They were loading up wagons, buggies. Everyone had a different idea which direction to go. I don't have any family here. I have a horse. But Mr. Staley was kind enough to take me in his buckboard. He thought we could make it to Lathrop. But only an, an hour or so from town, near Rocky Point. Miss Bridget, you, you don't have to talk about it. No, I, I want to. Somebody has to know. Suddenly, out of, out of nowhere, we saw three of them. Mr. Staley told me to get off the wagon and hide in the rocks. He almost pushed me off. And then he whipped the horses into a run so the Indians would follow him. Maged over the ridge, and they galloped after him. Quite a man. Later. Later, the, the Paiutes rode past where, where I was hiding, and I heard them. I heard them laughing and yelling. And one of them was Carrie. <laughs> Mrs. Blanza. You're right. I'm Josh Tanner, the man they said killed Billy Coulter. The card writes no, they found me in the jail. Everything all right out there? So far. Kennedy sent me in to rustle up something for supper. You'll find plenty of grub over there. Mrs. Burns, we found these in the general store. You're going to need them. I know I'm delaying you. Mrs. Burns, the pirates have come and taken whatever it was they wanted and they've gone. We're just about as safe here as any place. Till tomorrow, maybe. Now, you're going to get yourself a good rest tonight and... Well, I'll be ready to ride out early in the morning. Tanner, I will leave you at sunset. Thank you. Miss Burns. What do you know about that man? Just what I heard, that he shot the culture boy, Bill. That's all I know. I've only been here for three weeks. I've been waiting for my husband to send me stagecoach fare from Virginia City. We're from Ohio, Mr. Cartwright. Paul couldn't make a go of it, and he's trying to work something out in the silver mine. You know, we're from Virginia City. Yes, your, your son Joseph told me. You never should have left, and I never should have started out. No. Sorry. Guess that's not the right thing to say. It's just that I don't feel I'll ever be a pioneer woman. And I hate to admit it. I'm afraid. Ma'am, let me tell you something. You women call it being afraid. We men call it being cautious. It's just about the same thing. Oh. How's it going? Well, I think 
These horses would feel a lot better if we let them run free. Yeah, man, they would at that, but Paul wants some lead, that's the way it's gonna be. Now he's the boss, they're his horses. They're good stallions. Fine as I ever saw. You know, if the Paiute knew there were animals like this around, they'd come howling over that hill 150 strong. You seem to know them pretty well. I had a little horse ranch of my own till they came howling out of the sunrise one morning. You all right, ma'am? You need some water or anything? No, I'm, I'm fine, thanks. We better get them moving. Come on, come on. Get up. Like that one? Why? I didn't get a chance to look. I think it was just a scout. Well, there's another one. Right up there. Lots of fires. Only four. I was beginning to think you were inviting a Paiute to supper. What changed your mind? The way you lit the fires after sunset. When it's too dark to see the smoke and still too light to see the flames. It's a smart trick. How are the stallions? Well, they're bedded down, resting easy. I see what you got in mind. If the Paiute come onto our track, they'll think we're a column of cavalry. They find this camp with four cold fires, bits and pieces of soldiers' gear sticking out of the grass. They'll be sure of it. I hope so. You may find out pretty quick. Hoss told me he thought he saw a flash just before sunset, north of us this time. Be 
sleeping. suspect a thing we're headed straight for virginia city your husband is there waiting i don't care if i never show up paul will think it was the indians either we make it to virginia city or we don't make it anywhere but we could leave them somewhere along the way i've got cartwright pegged he has an obligation to turn me in and he will but you didn't kill billy coulter he drew first he walked into my room with a gun in his hand and who knows that except you and me then i've got to tell them I told you to keep quiet at the inquest, and you did. You're going to have to do the same thing now. But I can't, Josh. They'll hang you. What about you? Your whole life will be ruined. Oh, my life is ruined if I'm not with you. You never knew Paul, Josh. But it was over before I met you. He's a fine man, and I admire him. I don't love him. But don't say it. Just keep quiet. Promise. A liar's promise. A lady's promise. I promise. Sleep nerves, I suppose. I was just telling Mrs. Burns how the Paiute, in fact, most Indians, won't raid at night. Yes, I've heard that, but I don't think I believe it. No, it's, it's true, all right. It's a part of their religion. They believe that if a, if a warrior is killed during the night, his spirit is lost and wanders forever looking for his happy hunting ground. Well, I think you ought to try to sleep, Mrs. Burns. Yes, I will. Thank you. to keep up, but I'm so tired. Can't we rest for a little? Not if you want to keep that pretty hair of yours. We've got to keep moving. Here we go.
like that, huh? You just let him grab her and ride off. Didn't even go after her. Well, that figures. You had to save your expensive stallions. You got a good-sized gash in the back of your head. Cleaned it best I could. Thank you for that. Your gun's on the ground right behind you. Next you had. Here we got them all. He drops them. Well, that Mrs. Burns. She rode with us. She was sick, and scared. She never whimpered. If you're not interested, I'm going after her. Tanner, I'll go with you. Nobody's going anywhere. Even if you were lucky enough to catch up with them before they got to the main camp, they'd still kill her before you could do a thing about it. You know the Paiute card, right? You know what they'll do to her. Yes. And when they're through with her, they'll sell her to the Comancheros. Look, you don't own me. I'm going after her. You stay right where you are. You don't need me. One man more or less won't make any difference. You listen to me. You listen good. The Paiute aren't going to do anything till they boast and brag and work themselves up to it. And there's one place they're not going to be looking for us. And that's right in their own camp. All going? Yeah, all of us. here. Got a rope corral right in here. Teepees set in here. On one we were in luck. It's not the main camp, just a raiding party. Can't be more than old 25, 30 Indians. I noticed a guard in front of this end teepee. I figure that's where they got Mrs. Burns. Well, head on attack won't work. Mrs. Burns will be the first one killed. Paul, those pirate mares in that corral. If they could see or smell our stallions, they'd run with them, if they could get out of that corral. It's a pretty solid rope corral. Somebody have to get in there and cut it. The wind's toward the lake. We could time it right to the minute. Is there any ground cover there at all? Yeah. Yeah, there's some here. You'd have to stay pretty low. You're thinking of that guarded teepee. That's my job. I lost the lady. I'll get her back. It's a two-man job. You can't do it yourself. My kind of work? All right, that's yours. Joe, the crown's your job. Right, Paul. Horse in the timber. The saddle horses. Now, I'll bring three stadiums right down here.
Take a minute or two to see about this axle. If you uh, want to go see the sheriff, he's right over there. I'm in no big hurry. Thought you might want to walk in by yourself. I'm going to tell him everything that happened. Mary. Maybe that'll help me, and maybe it won't. But sure as shooting, it'll ruin your life. I don't care what people say about me. I care. Especially when the things they say are ugly. And women only whisper them. I don't want that to happen to you. The worst that can happen to me is I'll do time in prison. And I'll survive. I'm not sure I will. Yes, you will. You're married. Any man you'd marry, he's got to be quite a guy. You know, he's checking every stage and rider coming in, asking about you. You're just making it worse. Mary, look at me. You were stuck in Coulter Corners, alone and scared, fighting off Billy Coulter when I rode in. What happened then has happened before. People get over it. Ready? I got no choice. The law was holding you. Then it's yes, clear. you do, Sheriff. It wasn't murder. It was self-defense. Sheriff, this lady's trying to help me because she thinks she owes me something. She's going to tell you that she saw the shooting. But she didn't. She wasn't even in Coulter Corners. Thanks for the try, Mrs. Burns. Coulter Corners. That's Lexington County, isn't it? That's right. A week. After you and the boys left, the governor sent Judge Spear. Look into things. A lot of talk at old Colonel Calder and played fast and loose with the law. The judge had to come back, count the rates. Uh -huh. You 
Did I tell you? Yes, I did. Mary, thank God. You're safe. We're together. You're a very lucky woman, Mrs. Burns. These are the two men that saved my life. Mr. Cartwright, this is my husband. Mr. Cartwright, how can I thank you? No need. Mr. Tanner. Mr. Tanner, I'm very grateful. And the sheriff, I know. I'm afraid I've been a nuisance every day asking about you. Worked out fine. How can I ever thank you? You know the thanks I need. We're all thankful. Mr. Tanner. Thank you for everything. Goodbye, Mrs. Byrne. Thank you. All I could do, dear, was hope. It sounded so horrible. What wonderful men to bring you through. Yes, you'd have liked them. They were fine men. Mr. Tanner, you're not going to be in here very long. When you get out, how about signing on with us at the Ponderosa? Thanks. I'd best move along. Deputy, if I've got a choice, give me the cell with the best bed. I can use it. Taking your wallet. Hey, mister, stop right there. You all right? Yeah. 
Where is he? Over there. It's Jim Campbell. He's dead. Did you know him? Yeah, a little. He, he has a farm near the Ponderosa. That's yours? Yeah. He slugged me and grabbed it. The wallet's worth more than what's in it. Three dollars. Lucas coroner's inquest is to learn all we can about the manner and cause of James Campbell's death. Now, how well did you know him? I talked to him once or twice. He, we had a drink together once. When you saw him take something out, out of Mr. Travis's coat, did you know who he was? No, it was too dark. But you were certain he had a gun in his hand? Yes, I could see that. Did you know that a robbery had been committed? No, not until later. But there was one man lying on the ground and another one running away with a gun in his hand. He ran out of the alley. I shouted at him to stop and he started firing at me. That's all, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you. I'll try to make this as brief and painless as I can, Mrs. Campbell. You and your husband bought a farm on Red Spring Road about two years ago. What is the condition of that farm now? Well, we were making a go of it. Just barely. Everything we made had to be put back into it. We were hoping that next year uh, might be a better year. On the 11th, your husband came into town. Can you tell us why? Our uh, mortgage payment was due. Jim was going to try to get a loan from Mr. Morgan at the bank against a crop of votes we were putting in. Did he have any hope of getting that loan? He'd been turned down twice, but he was going to try. It is the finding of the coroner's jury that Mr. Kennedy killed James Campbell in self-defense. While we sympathize with the widow, it is clear that her husband died while committing a crime. No charge will be made against Mr. Kennedy. The inquest is adjourned. Mrs. Campbell. There's not much I can say. Well, why don't you just say what there is to be said and be done with it? I'm, uh, sorry. You're right. That's not much. Miss Campbell, you dropped this letter. I'll be glad to mail it for you, if you'd like. You do that, Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Cartwright, I know this is a bad time of the year to be asking for time off. But there's something I've got to do. So I'm going to have to knock off a little early every afternoon for a while. Any idea how long? Maybe a couple of months. Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll do my share. Just take whatever you think is fair out of my pay. Well, no question of that. All right. All right. Anything else? No. Oh, Candy, there's something else I'd like to say. That coroner's jury declared you innocent. Now, don't you go off convicting yourself. I won't. But when I have a debt, I pay it. My name's Candy. What's yours? Your mother around? Thank you. My name's Candy. I'll remember.
I'll do that. I can manage. The furrows aren't very straight. But then plowing's not a woman's work, is it? What are you planting? Oats. At least we had that seed paid for. Now, if you don't mind. If, uh, if you're trying to do this all by yourself, you've got to be behind on your other chores. Let me do the plowing and, and you tend to that. And, uh, Kenny. Finished for the day. I took care of the team. I left the plow up in the field. I don't expect any thanks. But you're going to have to tell me if you want me to come back. I didn't ask for your help, Mr. Kennedy. That's right, you didn't. Understood. I didn't want you around here. You also thought you could keep this place up by yourself, didn't you? Well, look at it. There's no wood for the kitchen stove. The door has fallen off the hen house. The plow needs to be done. The fences need to be fixed. You had to stop trying to keep up to do the washing. I don't want your help. We need somebody's. I'm doing just fine by myself. Nobody's come around, huh? Well, why should they? It's a busy time. They've got their own things to do. Well, then it better be me, because you need help. What makes you so pig-headed? I was about to ask you the same question. Ponderosa mail. Uh, most of it's for Ben. Uh, you have anything for Mrs. Campbell? Mrs. Campbell, huh? I um, heard you were doing the chores out there. For me. Chores and plowing. Working two places at once must be kind of exhausting. Just give me your mail. No offense intended. One letter. table. Here, Fernando, don't spill. Thank you. Canada. There's a uh, letter for you at the post office. You didn't have to go to that trouble? That's all right. I was going by anyway. Uh, won't you come in? Look, 
Look, you're sopping wet. The storm will likely be over by the time dinner's finished. If you'd care to stay. I would. If you'd like to get out of those wet clothes, I think I can find a shirt and a pair of pants for you. No, thanks. I, uh, I'll just dry out here by the fire. Food smells good. Oh, be ready in a minute. It's not very fancy, but it's hot. No hurry. You didn't have to help with this. I enjoyed the dinner. It looks like he's had quite a day. Yes. He does that all the time. Excuse me. I'm going to go tuck him in bed. Will you let me carry him? No, that's all right. I no, please, it. please let me. His father used to do it. I see. The rain stopped. I better be on my way. Thank you for bringing the letter. He didn't even read it yet. Came all the way from Wyoming, too. Good night, Mr. Kennedy. Good night. Thank you. when I was a kid. I can still remember. He can be a handful. Sometimes I think raising a child's harder than breaking a colt. Oh, no, no. Kids are easier. With a kid, you don't have to worry about a saddle. Oh. Maybe you're right. I never thought about it that way. Can you stay for dinner? No, thanks. Making a place for me at your table takes food away from you and Kenny. I'm used to feeding three. I I've invited a friend to dinner. He hasn't answered me yet. goes all day, I'm not surprised. That piece of pie? Oh, 
Oh, I've had two already. <laughs> That's a handsome pie, Mrs. Campbell. Lisa. I've always been partial to rhubarb pie. I just never found anyone who could make it as well as Anne, not till now. And your sister? My wife. I didn't know you were married. I'm not. It was over a long time ago. You never remarried? No, I had too much wandering to do. That's no life for a woman. Now, you, that's a different story. I don't think I know what you mean. You're young. You're pretty. And you're a widow. You've got a son. You've got a farm you're dead set on keeping and you can't do it alone. It's time you started thinking about a husband. I think it's a little too soon for that. Now, how did I get on that subject? That's much too serious. Yes. Yes, it's much too serious. Come on, have another piece of pie. It's just going to go to waste. <laughs> no, go to waste with Kenny in there. He could eat the whole thing by himself. Yeah, maybe you're right. Was it very long before you stopped missing your wife? Long time. I guess maybe that's why I started wandering. Sometimes I still miss her. Thank you for telling me. Better get these dishes. Give me help. No, no. no. Look, you've got a long ride home. Somebody tied this across the trail just high enough to knock a rider off his horse. Well, they must have done it sometime late last night. I came along the trail in the afternoon. It wasn't there then. It's new. Anybody bought it in Virginia City, Mr. Thompson, ought to know who it was. No, the only thing he knows about is local gossip. Yeah, but why was it done? Well, if that's somebody's idea of a joke, I'd have to stay around and, and watch to enjoy it. I didn't see anyone around there. Those tracks were on that trail out there. Nobody ever uses it except when they're coming here at the house. No, it wasn't done for a joke, Candy. I think you'd better be very careful. Where's Kenny? He's, uh, with Mrs. Party. I didn't want to bring him here to the grave. He thinks Jim's just gone away. I guess he misses his father. A little. Now. He'll forget after a while. They do at that age, you know. Maybe after a while, I will, too. It's 
It's been such a short while. And I can't even remember what Jim's voice sounded like. I loved him, Candy, and I can't remember. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. But I loved him. I know. Please forgive me. I didn't mean to embarrass you. You didn't embarrass me. You got my shirt a little soggy, though. We better get back. I have to get Kenny. Mrs. Party will want to get back to her family. She left Kenny with us. Uh, she said something about not having any more time to wait for you. She flew out of here with all her feathers ruffled the wrong way. I don't understand. Well, she went back to the cemetery looking for him. She came back, just left the boy with us, and walked off. just a little something I picked up along the trail. What is it? Oh, it's nothing you'd be interested in. But what? Oh, Candy, they're beautiful. Isn't that just like a woman every time? <laughs> the pretty over the practical. This is dinner. Eat. You can't eat flowers. Nobody ever gave me flowers before. I never gave anyone flowers before. <laughs> There's a hole in the north fence. I'll get to it. You don't want any deer wandering around trampling down your new crop. I'll put these in water. They'll look beautiful on the table at dinner. All from the uh, Ponderosa, huh? Thought sure Mrs. Campbell would be having some. She's been sending a lot of letters out lately. Mrs. Campbell doesn't need you to mind her business. Over me. See here, Mr. Kennedy, it's my job to read what's written on these here letters. How do you think I can stamp them right anyway? And then there's the proper charge. You call it whatever you want. Just keep your nose on that side of the counter. Kenny? Kenny! <laughs> Hiya, buddy. Kenny, I think you better get down. Sure is nice a Kennedy to help out the widow like he does. <laughs> Ain't that a picture? Of course, uh, used to be your husband did that. <laughs> Three dollars and a nickel bullet, and Kennedy's got himself a lady friend. <laughs> shut up, Devlin, shut up! Goes to prove I'm right. Candy, please. I don't blame you, Kennedy. She's a good-looking woman. Get in the wagon. I'll get your supplies. Go on. Kenny, now change your clothes. Now, why can't you come out here anymore? I didn't say that. I said it'd be better if I didn't come out here as much. But why? The planning's done. The repairs are finished. I don't have to be out here all the time. 
The Conrades are paying me. At least they expect me to work for it, for them. I know, Candy, I know. They've been very kind. But we need you. That's another thing we have to talk about. Don't you want to see us anymore? Yes, I do. And I will. By coming out here so often doesn't look good to those waggle tongues in town. Oh, it's only a few. I know, and they're gossips, and everyone knows it. But they do listen. Well, I don't care what they say. Yes, you do. You, you cared when I had to flatten Devlin just now to shut him up. And, and at least he talks out loud. What about the ones who talk behind your back? They're the ones that really hurt. And, and you're too easily hurt now, Lisa. You've you got Kenny to think of. What do we do? I'll come out on Saturdays, and we'll... If there's any heavy work to be done, I'll do it then. We've gotten used to having you around here. Me and Kenny. I know. It's gonna be a long time till Saturday. my land now. Oh, <laughs> you don't mean that. It's because a fella had a little nip and you want to run him off? I'm warning you, get out of here. <laughs> Bet you don't run off that candidate. Stay right there. You ain't gonna shoot me. I wouldn't bet on that. Now leave. I'm betting that ain't loaded. Well, you're just gonna have to take your chances, mister. <laughs> now, come here. Cut it out. I ain't gonna hurt you. You might even get the light green. Come here. Come here, you You got no stake in this cart, right? Maybe not, but... Let's go see what the sheriff has to say. No. Ma'am? If you do that, everybody in town will hear about it. Well, just want to let him walk off? Is that what you want? Please. Get out of here, devil. Go. <laughs> oh. He's likely to come back, ma'am. Oh, I don't think so. Next time I'm going to see that my gun's loaded. I hope you understand, Hawes. There's just been so much talk about this already. I'm hoping this way you'll be a little too embarrassed to say much about it. Well, I, I hope so for your sake, ma'am. Forgive me, I haven't even said thank you. Guess it's lucky for me you were coming by when you did. Well, it wasn't just happening by, ma'am. As a matter of fact, I was on my way over here. Candy said that you might need some help today, so I thought I'd come down and volunteer. Well, how come he didn't come? Well, the doctor wouldn't let him. Candy had a little hard luck. A fella took a pot shot at him, just grazed him here in the arm. Nothing serious, but the doctor won't let him out. He's lucky. He could have been killed. Mason, what's the matter? Hoss told me you'd been shot. Is that all? Don't let this thing fool you. It's not serious. It's not Devlin. I know that. It was a gunfighter. I don't know what kind of game he's playing with you, Candy, but he's serious. How do you know all this? He's Jim's brother. I asked him to come here to kill you. I wrote a letter before the inquest. All I could think of was that you'd killed Jim, and I wasn't going to let you go unpunished. 
it was a letter you picked up and mailed. I didn't know you, Candy. All right. All right, I understand why you did it. Lucky for you, you had a gunman in the family. Jim and I hadn't seen Jake in over five years. I wasn't even sure I could reach him. After you came to help us, I realized I was only trying to hurt you to make up for losing Jim. I wrote and tried to stop Jake. I thought I reached him in time, but I guess I didn't. Candy, I'm sorry. So am I. You should have tried to kill me yourself, Lisa. It's more honest, anyway. I thought you ought to know about Jake. I don't know where he is, but at least now you can be on your guard. Oh, so I can go hide in the bunkhouse until you call him off if you can find him? No, thanks. Candy, he's going to kill you. Isn't that what you wanted? Isn't it? No. No, not anymore. But I don't expect you to believe me now. Mrs. Campbell. Well, I'm sure you're quite right, Mrs. Party, since you seem to know everything about everybody in town. But you don't mind if I leave it there, just to confuse you. you go inside and wash up, okay? Hurry along now. How long have you been here? In town? Or around here, watching you cuddling with the man who murdered Jim. You had no right to spy on me. Afraid I'd see something you didn't want me to know? It's not like that, Jake. That's the way it looked. I sent you a letter. I got it. Well, then what are you doing here? I told you I changed my mind. <laughs> you changed your mind. Kennedy shot Jim down, left you and the boy. And all he had to do was come around here sweet-talking, and you changed your mind. Well, sweet sister-in-law, I ain't changed mine. You were right to send for me. Maybe Jim didn't mean all that much to you. That's a lie, and you know it. Yeah? Is that why Kennedy's all but moved in? And Jim only did a month. Jake, you don't understand. Look, when I wrote you, I was upset. I was grieving so much for Jim, I, I didn't even know what I was doing. I just wanted to get even. As far as I'm concerned, that's the only thing you ever did right. I don't care how you changed your mind or why. But that boyfriend of yours killed my brother. No, Jake! He killed Jim. Now it's his turn. Well, you know, she lost her husband. You've got to consider the shock, the deep distress. I, I agree it was wrong, but I can understand why she wrote the letter. How do you feel about it? I'm not sure. It's a little strange when someone you think is a friend wants you dead. Well, in a moment of anger, yes, but that's long gone. I realize that now. I, I guess I was a little rough on her when she told me. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was angry. <laughs> come on, come on. Kenny Jake is here. I tried to talk to him, but he's determined to kill you. All right, now, don't you worry about it. I'm going to take care of it myself. What I need now is an exact description of it. Get down, get down! Get over here against the wall, quick! Kenny, stay down. Now stay down. Come on. Stay low. Get over in that corner. Kenny, get down. If you don't want those others to get hurt, you better come out of there. Candy, let me try to talk to him. You tried that. Well, maybe I can make him listen now. Jake? Jake, I know you don't care what happens to me, but Kenny's in here. He's Jim's son. So much for that. Can you spot him? Not from here. When I tell you, you wave that in front of the window. Not bad, Kennedy! But not good enough. You better come out of there. If I don't! That house is gonna look like a sieve! Lisa and Kenny are in here. They don't mean a thing to me. You got two minutes to come out of there. Why, he's your own brother-in-law. He saw us together. He thinks I didn't love Jim. There, I try to circle out the back door around toward the barn. Candy, be careful. I'll try. Why didn't you shoot me in the back? This is going to be self-defense if anybody asks. No, right, your, your turn, Campbell. Get up. Candy? It's all right, Lisa. Get some rope. You were lucky you had help, Ranch Hand. Get up!
you some time to think. It's been several days. I did some thinking. Kenny and I are leaving tomorrow. I found a job over in Morgan County. It's actually working out quite nice. Uh, Ed Randolph said he'd take the farm on shares along with his own. He's going to take care of the house, the barn. Why? Why, Lisa? It's too much work for a woman. I can't expect you to go on helping me forever. Helping's not the word I had in mind. I want to marry you, Lisa. No. Candy, it's too soon for that. Take your time. There's no rush. Take all the time you want. I'm the woman who sent for a man to murder you. Remember? All right. You were hurt. You were upset. You wanted revenge. You're human, Lisa. You made a mistake. Show me someone who hasn't. I made a very big mistake. All right, but it's over, and it's behind us. That's no reason to run, Lisa. That's exactly what you're doing. Yes, Candy, I'm running. I'm running from everything I want. But there is no way in the world it's going to work. We love each other. We'll make it work. No, Candy, just accept it. No. Tell me. Kenny is five years old. And every day he asks me when his father, his real father, is coming back. Now, if we got married, what would happen when he's 12 years old and he asks me what happened to his father? What would I tell him? That I killed him. And that would destroy all of us. I'm sorry. Betty Randolph is coming over to help me finish packing. Walk in sunshine. Always. What's the trouble? Drunken Paiutes. They jumped me last night. Took my horse, took all my gear. <clears throat> oh, I walked me up a fine crop of blisters. Guess maybe I'm lucky they didn't nip my hair along with everything else. Say, uh, that coffee sure does smell good. My name's Griff Bannon. 
Lloyd Trumbull. Thanks. Oh, that helps. Yeah, that really helps. You from around here, uh, Mr. Trumbull? Not recently. Lived near here 20 years ago. Cattle and Indian country then. No mines, no Virginia City. Mister, after last night, it's still Indian country. Or maybe it's just my luck. I don't know. Things start going wrong. Just no stopping them. That bad? Worse. Say, uh, that horse. I, I, I've seen that brand before. Is, is that Montana, maybe? No. Colorado. Oh, that's good country down that way. I bet you hated to leave it. Wrong again. A month ago, I was riding grub lines down there. No job, no hope of getting one. Well, you sure don't look hungry now. But I was gonna tell you. Brisket of boot one day, the next day, you got it all. Sounds like you struck gold. In a way. Enough so I can spare a couple of dollars to a man who's hitting it rough. As soon as I stole my gear, I'll give you a lift to town. Mighty neighborly of you. from school. Miss Griggs asked me to stay after and help her. You can ask her if you don't believe me. Did I say I didn't believe you? I asked you a question. No. Then what's troubling you? Nothing. Look at me. I told you nothing! Don't. Use that tone with me. Not ever. I don't want to use this switch on you again, but you're not too big and I'll do it if you don't behave. Now stop that. Stop crying. Don't think I can't see what's going on, because I can. And so Ed started with your sister, not telling the truth. But, now you listen to me, I'm talking to you. Sneaking around, saying one thing, doing another. That's how it started. I didn't notice till it was too late. But not this time. You're not going the way she did. And no lies. When I ask you a question, you are going to answer me truthfully. You understand me? Yes, Pa. And you go to your room. I'll come and see you later. Asleep. He could have gotten up and walked away. No, he wasn't asleep. I was standing right over there at the edge of the water. It's as close as I could get without swimming in it. It's too fast and cold to do that. The bridge is a mile from here, and by the time I got there and back, I just thought it'd be better and smarter to get help. How long were you over there? 
Watching him, you mean? Mm hmm Oh, I don't know. It seemed like forever. That uh, fellow that you saw riding out, what'd he look like? I don't know. I only saw his back. The one here was... so still that he scared me. And I saw a beetle walking on his face, and he didn't move. Oh, sleep, a hurt, dead. Well, we can't find out now, but there's something mighty strange that went on here. Take a look at this. Somebody used to cover up the tracks, didn't do a very good job of it. Yeah, I just noticed that. I think we'd better let the sheriff know about this. Property of Joshua Trumbull, July 12th, 1837. On this day, Marie, wife of Joshua, gave birth to a son, Lloyd Trumbull. Weight, six pounds, 10 ounces. That's your father's handwriting, all right. I'd recognize it any place. I hoped you would, sir. You don't have to serve me, son. I'm almost one of your family. Do your mother and father well. I handled your uncle's affairs for years. I know that, sir. <laughs> now, there you go again. Most people call me Judge. It's been years since I've been on the bench, but my friends seem to think the name fits. I can see why, Judge. I took you wing shooting once. Oh, you couldn't have been more than five or six. You didn't enjoy it much, though. Shotgun kicked too hard. Ah, oh, you got your mother's coloring. But you got your father's nose. There's a strong resemblance. This is my letter to you. It was a, a while catching up to me. Uh, uh, you asked me to get in touch with you regarding the inheritance, but you didn't say exactly how Uncle Gerald died. Oh. I thought I enclosed the clipping. Oh, it doesn't matter. I didn't tell the truth anyway. He died of foolishness. He was my friend, but he was a stubborn old... He was stubborn. He wouldn't see a doctor, and I killed him. You said that you wanted uh, proof of identity. Well, you certainly brought enough. You couldn't have been more than three or four when your mother died. I don't suppose you remember. Only that she was pretty. You know, you're going to come into a nice piece of money. Your uncle was uh, kind of a tight-fisted man. I used to tell him that he was a bit of a miser. When? You're wondering, when do I get the money? Yes, I guess it was. <laughs> well, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's your money, and you've come a long way for it. As executor, I carried out the terms of the will. I sold cattle, the ranch, chattels at a fair price, put the money in the bank. $42,021. I told you he was a miser. Certain formalities have to be observed. The court will want to examine these items of proof. And then they will release the money to you. Minus my fee, of course. Of course, but how long will it be before I, I actually get the money? Oh, ten days, two weeks. Well, see, I used up most of my money getting here. I gotta find something. You're the only person in town that I know. And... Oh, the court wouldn't approve in advance. Bad practice. Are you a cattleman? I work cattle. Good. The Ponderosa. They're hiring some extra hands for a roundup. The owner, Ben Cartwright, is an old friend of mine. You just give him this. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I could advance you the money myself, but I'm a bit of a miser, too. <laughs> Besides, when a man is young and healthy, he ought to earn his own way. You're right, Judge. Well, it's drink time. So if you step over to the silver dollar across the street with me, it'll be my pleasure. And mine. Thank you.
<laughs> Are you all right? Oh, it's this cold. The cough keeps hanging on. Say, uh, <clears throat> them two in the wagon, the man and little girl. I swear I've seen them before in, uh, in Colorado. Without my spectacles, I can't tell who they are. You know them. You'll probably see them again. I'll make a point of it. <laughs> Jamie saw the body from over there. That close, there's no mistaking a rock or something for a man. No, sir. He was laying right down there, all sprawled out, with one arm hanging over. He could have been unconscious or hurt. It'd be hard to tell from across the river. Well, then why would that other man ride out like he did, instead of trying to help him? That's one I can't answer. Another one is who tried to brush out these tracks and why. I'll start a search for a body and ask a few questions of the neighbors around. See if anybody else saw anything out of the way. Yep. If I turn up anything, I'll let you know. Thanks, ma'am. You didn't believe a word I said. Clem? Yeah. He's gonna investigate, which means that he believed you. Now, don't worry about it. He's a good law man. Well, I sure know what I saw. A dead man. No, Bob, that goes over in the rear end of that wagon. Something we can do for you? Why, well, I sure hope so. I hear you starting your roundup. Uh, thought maybe you could use an extra hand. You don't look much like a working saddle stiff to me. Maybe, but uh, I sure can put out a day's work for a day's pay. Say, you wouldn't happen to be uh, Mr. Cartwright now, would you? <laughs> no, he's inside and busy. Well, I got something. Uh, yeah, here it is. It's kind of a get to know your card from uh, Judge Garraway to Mr. Cartwright. Well, we should have come up with this in the first place. Saved us both some time. Come on. James L. Cochran. You're on the payroll. Ah, oh, Bill, good to see you again. Well, this is your seventh round up, isn't it? No, more like the ninth. I'm sure glad to be here. Good to have you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Kelly. Same. Dusty? Oh, there's Garraway. Well, Judge Garraway sent you at the right time, Mr. Trumbull. We're hiring men for the roundup. Well, to tell you the almighty truth, I ain't exactly what you might call a top hand. But uh, you got any line riding that needs doing, I'm your man. Fine, you're hired. Well, I sure do thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, I'll just do the job, that's all I ask. Dusty, show where to bed down. Sure thing. Oh, golly, I'm sorry. That's quite all right, young fella. When I was your age, I'd like to move fast, too. Huh? That supply list you want at home. No, thank you. Would you like me to check it out for you? Yeah, if you like. Okay. Hey, here's that guy I almost bumped into. What do you mean, almost? Yeah, name's, yeah. Name's Trumbull. He's a new hand. Yeah, or used to be until you almost scared him away. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did it that, didn't I? Trump, hey, I wonder if he's related to old General Trumbull. Could be. I heard in town the other day you had a nephew out here trying to lay claim to the ranch. Really? Yeah. Will you three stop gossiping like a bunch of old women? Or have you forgotten we're shoving up around up first thing in the morning? I'll get your work done. Yes, sir. Oh, careful, careful. Handle gently, or you'll bruise the skin. Bruise them? Why, we'll break them. Or didn't you know there's eggs? Egg? Who tell you put egg in potato sack? Just a joke, I'll say. Joke? I give you a joke. Then I tell you, we'll watch you fellow. Just about ready, Pop. All right. Jamie? Hi, Jamie. Hi. 
Mr. Trumbull, can I see you for just a moment, please? Something I can do for you, Mr. Cartwright? Well, you know, Dusty has that game leg, and I'm afraid he won't be able to do any riding. So uh, I've asked Jamie to show you the note on the fences. I'll be obliged. I'm afraid it has to be done today, though, because uh, tomorrow this young fellow goes back to school. Oh, yeah. Sounds like I'm using up your day off, huh? Oh, I don't mind. <laughs> we'll see you at the end of the week. Uh, you get to school bright and early now. Sure will. Yeah, things like that. Cartwright sure runs one fine spread here. Yeah, Ponderosa's about the best ranch there is, I guess. Well, we still got a few miles to go before we hit that fence you'll be riding. Come on. Any neighbors around here? I haven't seen any houses. Oh, yeah, there's a couple. One's about a quarter of a mile over there. Well, who might they be, just in case I run into them? The Thatchers. Well, you probably know them pretty well. I mean, people uh, being friendly like they are hereabouts? Yeah, pretty well, I guess. We'd better be moving faster, Mr. Trumbull. We still got a ways to go. Sure thing. Yes, sir, good neighbors is a wonderful thing. Remember when I was your age or thereabouts, the, uh, Warner family was real close, wonderful people. They had a little daughter, uh, oh, about my age, Mary, her name was. I took a fancy to her, carried her books home from school and like that. Hey, uh, Jimmy, I don't suppose there's uh, maybe a neighbor girl around here that you kind of cotton to? Well, oh, there's Clem. Hey, hey, Clem! Friend of yours, is he? Oh, sure is. Clem Foster, deputy sheriff. Morning, Jamie. Hi, Clem. Uh, Clem, this is Mr. Trumbull. He's line riding for us this week. Morning, deputy. Trumbull, heard you've come to town. Judge Garraway tells me you've come into your uncle's property. Yeah, well, a man's luck changes, you know. Uh, one day it's a biscuit of boot, and next day you got it all. I'm afraid that's the truth. Jamie, you've had a couple of days to think about it. I was wondering if you remembered anything else about that man you saw right away. No, sir, I sure don't. There must have been something special about him. His size, his coloring, the clothes he was wearing. Nope. What about the horse he was riding? It's just an ordinary horse, a bay, I think. Ah, it's no good to us half the cow ponies in the country are bays. Golly, Clem, I sure wish I could help you, but I, I just can't remember another thing, you know? Well, that's all right, Jimmy. But if you do, you'll be sure and get in touch with me right away. Sure will. Glad to have you for a neighbor, Mr. Trumbull. Good luck to you here. Thank you very kindly, of Deputy. See you, Clem. So long. He sure is a friendly soul, just like everybody else here about. Yeah, yes. You know something, Jimmy? I think everything's gonna turn out just fine for me around here. Well, that's good. Come on. Now, we're not going to do that. Jamie, get in line, dear. Come along. Hey, 
you come home straight after school, you hear? Where did you go to Friday after school? I looked all over for you. I can't talk to you. Why not? My father doesn't want me to. Uh, wait a minute. Um, did you see anything strange on the way home? No, nothing. Well, you must have. You were ahead of me. No, I was... Miss Griggs asked me to stay after. But I, I look. That's enough, please. Well, Netta, I wanted to ask you to go to the school picnic with me. You're late, Netta. You're late, Jamie. All right, everybody. The capital of New York is Albany. The capital of Massachusetts is Springfield. The capital of Ohio is... Springfield? Netta, is that correct? No. What is the capital? Columbus. That's right. Sit down, woman, dear. Class attention. There's a word of truth to it. As a matter of fact, I believe Jamie made up the whole thing. Why would he do a thing like that? I don't know. Maybe just to get attention. Jamie wouldn't do that. He's a boy, isn't he? Or do you really think he saw a dead man? I wouldn't know. Say, why don't we go there? Might be kind of scary fun to see where a dead man was. I can't. My father told me to come straight home. You can go home that way. It's closer even. Come on. No. What's the matter? Nothing. Are you afraid to go there? Of course not. I just have to get home. Well, all right then. But I still think it's a scrumptious idea. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Wilma. Trouble, girl. What's the trouble? Netta, can't you tell me now what happened back there? Was it some boy who... Huh? Papa, no. All right, all right. Go on in the house now. Wash your face. Lie down and rest. I have to go someplace. I won't wait too long. Just you wait in the house.
Miss Griggs, I'm Continue, fin Jamie. But, but Miss Griggs, I've already Continue, been... Continue, Jamie. Why, it's Mr. Thatcher. How nice to see you. Miss Griggs, could I... <clears throat> could I talk to you for a few minutes? Of course. I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask. Yes, Mr. Thatcher. Does my Netta ever have to do that? <laughs> no, not that I remember. Netta's well-behaved, a fine student. But you should know that. You see her report cards. Yes. They seem all right. All right? It's better than that, Mr. Thatcher. Ned is one of the best students I have. Did you keep her after school Friday? No, I didn't. Jamie. Yes, ma'am. Do you think you could remember what you've just been writing? Yes, ma'am. Very well. That'll be all for today. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Hi, Mr. Thatcher. Now, Mr. Thatcher? Friday. She said you asked her to stay after school and help you. I see. Did you? No, I didn't. Thank you. Just a moment, please. She's a good girl, Mr. Thatcher. She's a liar. You're going to punish her. I am. I won't have a liar in my house. She's been up to something. Hiding in her room the last few days. She starts to cry if I even look at her. Why? That's what I'd be wondering. Well, I'll find out. I'll get it out of her somehow. I've been through this with her sister. First one lie, and then another, and another, until she, she couldn't tell the truth if she tried. You punished her, too. Not half enough. She ran off and got married. She... Did I tell you that? No, Mr. Thatcher. But there are no secrets in a schoolhouse. Children do talk about what they hear at home. Well, not if they're mine. You love your daughter very much. You must. Or you wouldn't be so concerned. But you're terribly strict with her. I'm a widower. It's not easy for a man to raise a girl. But she's not going to run wild the way her sister did. I've never had a child of my own. But I've known a great many. Ned is afraid of you, Mr. Thatcher. She's in trouble and she needs help, but she's afraid of you. That's why she hides in her room and cries. She has nothing to be afraid of. Then you'll have to prove that to her, won't you, Mr. Thatcher? I suggest you start right now. You don't care what you say, do you? I care. That's why I said it. Jimmy. Well, where'd you find him? Back over there, buried under some rocks and brush. He was murdered, no doubt. I don't know who he is. No papers, no identification. Pockets turned inside out and clean. There is something we do know. What's that? We know you saw the man who killed him. Yeah, I guess that's right. We've got to find that man, Jamie. Arrest him and try him for murder. And you've got to help me do it. But how, Clem? I've already told you everything I know. Well, it's not enough. A man with no description riding a bay horse. I couldn't arrest anybody on that, let alone get a conviction. Well, what do you need? I need a positive identification. Well, how can I give you a positive... Maybe there's something you've overlooked. Just one thing that would lead us right to the man we're after. Think, Jamie. Think hard. I'll try, Clem. 
do that. Otherwise, we're going to have a killer loose here in the territory. I just saw him there. No, please, Ned. It's very important. Honest. What do you want? Miss Griggs didn't keep you after on Friday. She did, too. She said she didn't. So you left the schoolyard ahead of me, right? Now, where the road runs along the creek, you must have seen... No, I didn't see anything. Ned, I'm your friend. You don't have to lie to me. All right. I did see. Jamie, I've been so scared. I haven't been able to eat or sleep or think or... I know. Just, just take it easy. Have you told anybody? I can't. I really can't. Even you. I don't know how hard it is to talk about it. Well, what did you see? All right. You saw two men, right? Now, one was laying over the rock. Now, the other one, did you see his face? I'll never forget it. Never. All right, you've got to tell Clem what he looks like. No, I can't tell anybody. I'm in enough trouble with my father already. Ned, that man you saw is a murderer. You don't know that. We don't even know if the body was dead. Yes, we do. Clem found it. That's why you've got to tell him what that man looks like. But he's probably miles away from here by now. Clem could never catch him. He might if he just knows what he looks like. All he needs is a good description. If I do, and my father learns I lied to him, he'll... Netta, you have to. We can't let him get away. He's a killer and he's on the loose. We've got to help Clem find him. All right. I'll tell Clem. Fine. Come on. Boy, I'm sure glad you decided to talk to Clem. <laughs> he's only Mr. Trumbull. Hi, Mr. Trumbull. Jamie, that's him. That's the man.
We can't risk it. It'll be dark in about an hour, so we've got to stay right here until then. We can't. My father... Well, then I'll go home with you. I'll tell him what happened. He'll understand. No, he won't. I know him. He won't believe us. Well, then we'll go to the Ponderosa. Hobson and Dusty will believe us, and Dusty can get Clem to rest, Mr. Trumbull. Your father will have to believe you then. Mr. Thatcher, you mean Netta wasn't home at all when you got there? No, she wasn't. You sure she said she was coming straight home when you left her? That's what she said, all right, because you told her to go straight there after school. Sure is funny, isn't it? You didn't see anybody else on the way? Any, any boys, maybe? Gosh, no. Of course, some of them are always trying to hang around us. Which ones? What are their names? Oh, there's uh, Melvin Broderick and... Bill Roscoe, and Jamie Hunter. But... Which one of those is Netta most interested in? Oh, golly. I don't know. Jamie Hunter, maybe. That's the boy who lives with the Cartwrights, huh? Uh-huh. Sure is funny, isn't it, Mr. Thatcher? Netta not being home like that. You'd think she'd at least have told me where she was going.
maybe. Bad man. You all right, young fella? Yes, sir. Thank you. It's all right now. It's all right. Hey, that bucket looks real good. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I guess I better be starting now. What's your rush? You've got a whole hour yet. Won't take you more than 20 minutes to get there. Oh, I know. I. You never know, something might happen. <laughs> like what? Oh, something, I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess. We'll have a nice time. We will, thank you. Uh, Jamie. Yes, sir? Don't you want the picnic basket? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Have a nice picnic. We will, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> It took me a while to remember. I enjoyed picnics. <laughs> 